Good afternoon, Bluebirds. I'm Aiden with Lauren, delivering your announcements. Happy birthday to Grace Shuley and Christian Greenwell. Students have been very busy working here at the middle school. Here's a recap on what's going on with Team 3, Team 6-3 and 7-3. Hey Bluebirds, I'm Aiden. And I'm Matt. And we are going to be telling you what goes on around HMS. Today, we will be showing you what 6-3 and 7-3 are going to be up to. The teachers are Mrs. Ewald and Mrs. Clubbys for both 6-3 and 7-3. How is it transferring from the old team system to the new one? It was a little harder because there was a lot more work, to whereas before I would teach the same thing four times a day. And now I have completely different preps every single period and I have to be really organized to make sure I don't forget something and on top of my game to make sure I have everything ready for each and every single class since there is nothing I'm doing that is double. How was it transitioning from your old middle school to here? Um, well it's been a world of difference. It is a little bit similar in the sense that in my old school there were times when we would do a block scheduling and I did have students multiple times a day or I would have them for a longer uh, time period. But it is different because I have fewer students and like I said it's easier to build those relationships with kids I think or students. How is it teaching the same students multiple times a day? It's actually really easy. We end up finding out a lot more about the students than if we just had them for one period. So a lot of bonds are formed and you're able to really make really strong, good connections to help them out and make them become better learners. How does it feel teaching the same students multiple times a day? Um, I really like teaching multiple times a day, teaching the same students multiple times a day, just because it feels like we can build a better relationship with those students. So, and it's also a real good way to reinforce the content. If I'm doing one thing in one class, I can kind of reinforce that with the other class. How could just two teachers teach both 6th and 7th grade? Well, it's simple. Since 6th grade have their encores in the morning, 7th grade can start their daily routine by going to Mrs. Clepi's room, which is language art at this time. When the bell rings, the 7th graders head across the hall to 2nd period, which is Algebra Part A, and, al and Algebra Part A is the only math on Team 7th grade. The 6th graders come. They go to Mrs. Ewald's room for math class, while the 6th 7th graders go to Ancient History. For fourth period, they switch rooms again, and the sixth grade class would be language arts, while the seventh grade class is having their last core of the day, which is life science. Now that the seventh graders have gone to their other classes, the sixth graders have their last two classes by themselves. During fifth period, the students go to Mrs. Ewald's class one last time for earth science. The last period of the day is when the sixth graders go to Mrs. Klepeis' room, which is modern cultures. A lot of 7th graders last year thought that they created Team 3 for the students that didn't do good in their classes the previous year, which isn't the case at all. The students in Team 3 are learning the same thing as the rest of you are that are not in Team 3. That's all for today, Bluebirds. Thanks for watching What's Going On Around HMS. See you, See you next, next time. time. All right, that's good. Should we cut it there? HMS's FCCLA won big in Louisville at the National FCCLA Cluster Meeting. Lexi Wilson placed third in the Early Childhood Challenge and Katie Deschler placed first overall in the Early Childhood Challenge. These girls are national winners. The HMS Band Concert is tonight at 6 p.m. in the pack. The book fair began today. All students will get the opportunity to come with their language arts teacher. Also, coming up this Thursday, December 6th, is the HMS Choir Concert in the pack. Students currently enrolled in the choir classes will be performing. Everyone is welcome. The Christmas concert is always a good one. Attention all sixth grade girls. Registration is now open for the Woodfield Volleyball League. This volleyball league is for students in fourth through sixth grade. An instructional clinic run by the Highlands Volleyball Program takes place on two Saturdays and then there will be a seven week seven weeks of, le of league games on Saturday in an end season tournament. The season will end by March 17, 2019. If you are interested, then contact, then contact, inf the contact information is in Skolji as well as pricing information. Here is a look back at our canned food drive.
This year, Highlands Middle School raised 19,084 cans, also including $5,400. The winners in the canned food drive were Miss Ewald in first, Mr. Lipscomb in second, and Mr. Augustine in third. All three classes raised over 2,000 cans. Great job to all classes and everyone that participated. The Highlands Middle School dance team also performed. They did very well and showed off their amazing talents. Each grade had 10 students who raised the most cans participate in the Turkey Bowl. In 6th grade, the winner in the Turkey Bowl was Ashton Pollock. In 7th grade, it was Ryan Tool, and in 8th grade, it was Ryder Cochran. The winner out of all grades was Ryan Tool. The top three teachers had a bowl off as well, with Miss Clark representing Mr. Augustine's homeroom in first place, Mr. Lipscomb in second, and Miss Ewald in third. After the teachers bowled, the principals had a bowl off. It was a close match, but Mr. Feldman won with a clutch strike to take home the victory. Great job this year, Bluebirds. Let's hope we can do even better next year. We'll be interesting to see what we can accomplish next year, Bluebirds. Coming up on December 14th is the 8th grade Christmas dance. The, the theme will be a tacky holiday dance. Tickets are $5 and will be sold at the door or Thursday and Friday at lunch. Wear your most outrageous holiday attire and win prizes. The more holiday cheer, the better. Play some generic reindeer games and bust a move to some really bad, okay, some good music too. This, this is guaranteed to be a very low, I mean high quality dance. Several students have messaged Ms. Mrs. Maines inquiring how they can figure out if they made honor roll. Here is Mrs. Maines with the details. HMS students. Many of you all have been sending me messages wondering how to figure out whether or not you're on honor roll in your overall GPA. So I'd like to take a few minutes of your time just to kind of explain how we figure that out and for you to determine if you're on honor roll. Uh, you'll need a couple things. First thing you'll need is a copy of your report card which shows you your grades and you'll need a copy of or at least be able to glance at the grading scale uh, which is right here. This is in the student handbook on page five and you can access the student handbook through the HMS website under quick links. So when you click on that handbook, go to page five and you will see this chart. Uh, and on this chart, it'll, it's broken into three areas. You'll see it goes from A plus all the way down to an F. It'll tell you the range of your grades. And then the GPA here tells you the number of quality points that the computer uses to figure out your grades. Okay, and then honor roll is a 3.25 to a 3.99 and super honor roll is a 4.0 to a 4.25. So to help make sense of this, I thought it'd be nice if we looked at a couple examples. So under example one, we're going to see here this student in language arts uh, scored an 82%. So if I go back over to my grading scale here, I find 82 is a B between 80 and 86, so I get three uh, quality points. So that's why we have a 3.00 right here. Math, the same thing, I earned an 81, which falls between the 80 and 86 for a 3.0. Science, an 88. Back on my chart, notice it's a B plus, an 87 through an 89, a 3.25. Social studies is an 87. Again, back on my scale here, it's a 3.25. Fitness, a 92, which bumps me up to the A between a 90 and a 96, gives me a 4.00. And then in Spanish, a 95, again, it puts me at the A mark, a 4.0. Okay, so that's my six classes there. Then if you add them up, again, a calculator uh, will be the best way to do that. I get 20.5, and then I take that overall 20.5 and divide it by six, because there's six classes, and that gives me an overall GPA of a 3.41. Coming back over to my honor roll status, the 3.41 is between a 3.25 and a 3.99, so this would be regular honor roll. My example two is gonna be a little bit higher, uh, in language arts, the student earned a 98, 
And coming back over to our grade scale, we're going to see 98 falls to the A plus, 97 to 100 is a 4.25. Uh, math was a 93, which earns me a 4.0. Science, I earned a 96, a 4.0. Social studies, a 90, 4.0. Engineering, a 91, 4.0. And art, a 98, a 4.25. Again, I add all six of those together, come up with 24.5. Divide it by six, because that's the total number of classes. And my overall GPA is a 4.08. Going back over to my honor roll status, you see the 4.08 falls between a 4.00 and a 4.25. So that would put me on super honor roll. So hopefully students, this will give you a good understanding on how to figure GPA. Please don't ever hesitate to come and talk to Mrs. Bednar or I if you have any questions. Have a great day. questions, contact Mrs. Mains. For lunch on today, we'll be having Cincy style three-way chili spaghetti and steamed corn. The alternate is pepperoni pizza. For tomorrow, we'll be having bluebird big boy sandwiches, french fries, and vegetable medley. The alternate is chicken patty sandwiches. Remember, you can always fix yourself a salad or add fresh fruit to your lunch. And now for today's quote of the day. Today's quote is, if you want something you never had, you have to do something you've never done. Have a great rest of your week, Bluebirds.